Okay, so the first thing I'm going to notice is, see how I went from this graph to the first derivative? And I looked at gradient. Okay, I looked at gradient. This tells me about the gradient of this. Well, in exactly the same way, if I took out this guy, if I took out the first graph and just started with this, I repeat the same exercise, right? This graph tells me about the gradient of this. Okay, I'm not going to draw it on because I'm deliberately going to avoid it because it will become confusing. But you can see, um, look at the sign. Negative, 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 negative. That's the gradient. It's decreasing. Do you see that? Zero. Positive, 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 which is exactly the regions that this is passing through. Does that make sense? Sign of the gradient here gives me regions that I pass through here. Okay. But, and here's the real kicker, right? I'm interested in what the second derivative, like, it's a first derivative of this first derivative, but I really want to know what this tells me about this, okay? Now, think about this, right? Remember we said, okay, look, at this point uh, in here, at this interval in here, right, the graph is decreasing. You notice that? And that corresponds to the fact that down here, the first derivative is negative, okay? But it's not the same negative. The, the type of negative does change, right? I don't know about the values, but I know, for instance, that down here, this is the most negative the derivative gets. Right? Do you see that? That's the lowest it goes, it's the minimum. Now, geometrically, what does that mean up here? It's a point of inflection. That means, now I'm going to get to that word in a second, but just more basically, right? If it's more negative, that means it's steeper, because that's what gradient is about, right? Are you steep? Are you shallow? Right? More negative means more steep in the negative direction. Okay. Now, therefore, at that point, that's the most negative. And as I move away from that point, I get less and less negative until I hit zero. And I get less and less negative until I hit zero here. Okay? Think about it another way, right? Do you notice as I'm going from left to right, left to right, okay? Again, starting at this stationary point, I'm zero here. And I'm in the negative direction. Think of like a lift, right? In the negative direction, I'm speeding up. I'm starting to drop off faster until I get to this point. And then what happens? I start to slow down, right? Remember we're talking about are things going up, they're going down, are they getting faster or are they getting slower, okay? So from here to here, the behavior, even though the gradient is still negative, so it's still decreasing, but it's a different kind of decreasing, right? From here to here, I'm speeding up. From here to here, I'm slowing down. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like the point where it actually is, the y coordinate of that, what would that, so that would relate to both the increasing and decreasing, like what would happen there? Okay, all right, I will get to that. I will get, we'll find out that coordinate in a second, okay? The important thing I want you to get, and um, I'm, I'm drastically running out of colors. I've used all four of my colors, so I'm just gonna repurpose my red one, okay? Um, I want us to notice the sign of this thing and how it corresponds to what we were just describing over here, okay? Do you remember I said, okay, from here to here, that's from one to two, okay? Is it getting faster or getting slower? It's getting faster, right? It's getting faster. Now, what does that correspond to here? Right, getting faster and it's decreasing, so it's negative, okay? Have a look. Yeah, it's, it corresponds to this getting dropping and dropping and dropping and getting to the lowest point. Okay, it gets to a lowest point and then it stops, right? And then instead of getting faster, it's getting slower. Okay, do you see that? Which corresponds to this first derivative getting zero. Okay, um, it's still negative. Now this point where you transition, right, from this kind of behavior to this kind of behavior is 2, x equals 2. That guy right there, okay? Now this idea of getting faster, getting slower, do you see it's not just happening on the inside. Do you notice that? Have a look. Can you see it's happening on the outsides as well? For example, how would you describe this, this part here? I'm, I'm slowing down. I'm really, really positive here, right? Which corresponds to this being really, really positive. Really increasing, very steep. And then it slows down, okay? Here, it speeds up, okay? So what's this talking about? This getting faster, getting slower business, okay? Here are my words. <coughs> this graph, it tells me about where I am. So this is a word that I would use to describe that. Where are you? It's position, right? 
Uh, a fancier word that you might use is displacement, okay? But that's, that's where are you? Where are you? This guy here tells me about gradient, right? How much is your position changing as you change your x values? In a physical context, we would use the word speed. And that's why we're saying getting faster, getting slower. Okay. Now, what you're getting now, if you have a look to the left of here and to the right of here, okay, I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to cover up half of this graph over here, or sorry, the right hand side, so we can only see the left hand side. Okay? Uh, in fact, I think I've used all my paper. Can I borrow someone's blank piece of paper? <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to cover the, um, the right hand side here. Okay? I want you to look at everything to the left of this special point, right? The special point where things, the behavior changes, okay? Everything to the left of this, I've got a negative second derivative. Do you notice that? Negative second derivative. What that corresponds to is the shape of this graph, if you imagine it a bit like a cup, okay? It's a cup that's facing down. Do you see that? Which way is this thing facing up or down? Like a parabola, okay? Whereas if I move now and I cover up this side, it's still that kind of, you know, curved shape. It's like a cup, but it's not facing down anymore. Yeah. It's facing up. That corresponds to the sign down here being up, okay? Now, which way is this facing? In, um, in lenses, we talk about uh, concave and convex lenses, right? In which way is the lens facing? I've actually got both because I'm long-sided and short-sided, okay? This, though, doesn't have two sides, the lens, right? It's either facing down or it's facing up. The word we use, rather than position or gradient, is what we call concavity. We take that word concave, right, and that refers to which way is the cup facing, okay? In this part of the graph, it's facing down, right? Which corresponds to the fact that down here, <coughs> the second derivative is negative, okay? This part of the graph is facing down. Over here, to the right, the second derivative is positive, which corresponds to the fact that our original graph is concave up. Okay? Now remember, I made a big deal about the fact that this spot is where things change. This spot is where things behave differently. Okay? We call that spot where it changes. It's not a stationary point. It's not that I've stopped moving. Actually, that's the fastest that I'm moving in a negative direction. Okay? What we call that point is a point of inflection, okay? Um, it flexes from facing downwards to facing upwards, okay? So we have turning points here and here, and this guy is pretty crowded, isn't it? Is a point of inflection. Now you will see frequently that this is abbreviated P-O-I. I never abbreviate it P-O-I because point of inflection is, is just the same as point of intersection, which is actually something that you will frequently be finding. So I never write that, okay? Um, isn't inflection the one where it goes like the same? Yes, exactly. Now this is what we're looking at when we're talking about um, different kinds of stationary points, right? We looked at um, maxima, minima, and then I said there's these guys, right? And I said it's a little bit awkward that I had to give you their name, and their name didn't mean anything at that point. Well, now it does. Because have a look at how these things change, okay? The two stationary points here and here, okay? Tell me now, now that you have a category and a word for this, tell me about the concavity of these two stationary points. They stay the same, right? Now my maximum is concave down, you see that? All the way through it's concave down. My minimum is concave up. All the way through, right? But have a look at these two guys down here. They are both also stationary points, but the concavity has changed, right? On the left-hand side for this guy, concave down, concave down, concave down. See that? But then as you transition past that horizontal point of inflection, it's concave up. And of course, it's in reverse for this guy. We, um, we talked about a function, its first derivative, and its second derivative, right? The sign of these first and second derivatives, they tell you about this one, are you going up or are you going down? This one, are you concave up or concave down? 
Okay? That's what the signs tell you about. What do the zeros tell you about? Here, the zeros tell you about intercepts. Here, the zeros tell you about stationary points. Here, the zeros tell you about... Now, I'm going to say points of inflection and I'm going to put an asterisk there, okay? As we're going to look at next week, and you actually already have the tools at your disposal to know, number one, you can have a point of inflection without the second derivative being zero. That's the first thing I'm gonna say. In fact, I've already given you the example. I will point it out to you again if you can't remember it, okay? But the first thing is, you can have a point of inflection without the second derivative being zero. But even more weird, you can have the second derivative being zero and not have a point of inflection, okay? They are not unlike here, where it's like, if you've got a gradient of zero, then that means a stationary point, and if you've got a stationary point, that means you've got a gradient of zero, right? So these are like, they mutually... Inclusive. In, well, yeah, they, 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 I get, I can deduce one from the other, okay? If the concavity, if the second derivative equals zero, do I get a point of inflection? Well, maybe, question mark. Actually, I have to go into the into, into K here, right? And if I have a point of inflection, does that mean that the second derivative is zero? And the answer is, well, maybe, right? And I will show you the special cases where sometimes it's the other way around, okay? But this is generally the case. Generally meaning usually, usually that's what happens, okay? Does anyone have any questions before I get you started on the first exercise? Wait, yes? I thought um, points of inflection had a gradient of zero. Okay, so have a look here. Have a look here. Uh, at this point, what's happening to my um, first derivative? My first derivative is negative. It's decreasing. That's why it's going down. I've got my green negative sign, right? But that point is where the second derivative is zero. And that's why I have a point of inflection there, right? The concavity went from concave down to concave up. And so that's what makes it a point of inflection, okay? So it doesn't mean that the gradient is zero. The gradient is not zero. The second derivative is zero. Okay? okay.